Hey there, shalligators. Today, let's talk about a couple we haven't mentioned in a little while. Jennifer Lopez and Ben Affleck. Things seem to be not that sunny. What? Hmm. Maybe you guys have seen this. It's a video that's gone a little, a little viral of Ben opening JLo's car door and like slamming it. Like he didn't slam it on her hand or something. You know, when I saw like that he slams a car door on her, I was like, like a part of her body? But no, he was just like, we're gonna play it. But I asked you guys like, what's going on with these two? Like, is this just a bad day? Because listen, couples have a bad day. And as I'm sitting down to record this, I don't even know what the topic is. Hopefully by the time I post this in the title, there will be a topic and like something we're gonna talk about. But I asked you guys on Instagram, like, what's the deal here? And there was a real mixed bag of answers because I was like, is this just a bad day? Or is there some trouble in paradise here? So we're gonna break down the psychology of their relationship. I've talked about it before, but it could use a recap because I think it's something that is very relevant to our lives. I think it's something we see a lot in celebrities and fandoms. It's deeper than it looks. And we're gonna talk about whatever topic bubbles up, maybe, how to get through a rough patch in your relationship. Would that be a good one? Give me four to five months to figure that out myself. <laughs> Maybe we'll talk about it. But before we do, guys, join the Shalantourage. You get five extra bonus videos a week and updates from me. We've got some really fun stuff coming up. I'm doing a whole Mother's Day video on how to deal with feeling like a disappointment to your parents whether that's in one specific category um, or just kind of overall. And I like to talk about things that are a little bit more private on there. I talk about who I'm dating and I do a lot of crying. But this one in particular really hits home because you know I have been very vocal. I don't wanna have kids and that's a huge disappointment. That's a huge disappointment as an only child, as a daughter of two only children and three only children grandparents. It's, it's bad. So it's something I have to deal with and live with all the time. And if you have branched out from your family, whether it's religion, a different town, a different major, anything, I understand, I understand. So we're gonna be talking about that. I am gonna do a Mother's Day video for you guys though. I haven't figured out what yet, but we'll see. We'll see what it is. And yeah, you get like five extra videos a week, whole bunch of group chats and everything, it's great. Go ahead and click the link down below. If you just kind of need, I, a lot of girls in Chalantourage, they say they join because they kind of needed a break from their group of friends or they needed to go someplace where they were just neutral and there wasn't any like, a, so, any reputation. They could just kind of start over and make connections based on truly who they were. It was, it's sort of a reputation free zone, which I think is really wonderful to be able to just kind of like, cleanse yourself of who you maybe were or your past or what people think of you and just find totally new friends. It's a really, really supportive community. Like no one ever fights. It's not like bitchy. It's like, I'm having a problem with this. And everyone's like chatting back and forth. I love it. I love it. I love being in there. Okay. So JLo and Ben. So here's the video. So it's not, it's not exactly the feel good video of the year. They're walking to their car. They've got a nice coffee. Uh, she has, I have that same bag. I really, <laughs> not to be run out of that bag. And they just look crabby. And I feel like they look crabby a lot. Now, it is to be noted, it is to be noted that Ben has resting bitch face. Like, ugh. You know that meme where he's like smoking cigarettes, just like, ugh. Which just hits us all in such an existential way. We're like, that's exactly how I feel, Benjamin. I totally blame some of his misery face on just how his face is structured. You know, he just looks pissy all the time. And I think that he's probably really fed up with the paparazzi, you know, just being there. Like, why does the paparazzi need pictures of someone getting in their car? Is that like groundbreaking news? Like breaking extra, extra, people get in car, use it to go to a different place. Like who the fuck care? I don't know. This is like, who the fuck cares, right? However, though, Bro, you married Jennifer Lopez. Like, this is of the same ilk of Meghan Markle. Like, I didn't know. If you've ever dealt with the police in any small way, you will know that I didn't know that was illegal is not a defense. Not a defense at all. It's the, I'm just dumb, I'm not intentional. Nope. 
And so that never held water with me and Meghan Markle. And that like, oh, I didn't know this is what royal life was going to be like. Are you fucking stupid? You didn't know who Prince Harry was? Did you pass second grade? Because that's when I first learned about the royal family and European history in general. Probably before that. I knew that there were kings and queens. I'm a princess. You didn't, you didn't know that? You didn't know? Okay. That's just, we're not going to get into that. But same with Ben Affleck. Like, you didn't know that marrying Jennifer Lopez was going to mean the paparazzi followed you? You know how you maybe could have known that? I don't know. You've already dated her. You dated her when it was like her popularity was so much more massive. You guys were Benefer. You were the first like couple portmanteau name. You didn't, you didn't think about this. So, okay. You know, I get, I can't imagine what it would be like to have photographers follow me. I, it would be horrifying, but it's also like, dude, then go work at, you know, go work at Quiznos. If you don't like this shit, like get out of Hollywood. Don't marry another celebrity. Marry another girl who works at Quiznos. Be sandwich artist and live the sandwich artist life. I don't know, but you chose this and every job has its downsides, okay? You don't have to worry about providing for your kids. You don't have to worry about who's gonna pay for it. If somebody breaks their arm and you don't have insurance, you don't have to worry about any of that. You do have to worry about this and that sucks, but I don't know. Shut the fuck up. Like, you're fine. You're actually fine. Maybe someone's going to take your picture every once in a while. Okay. So I asked you guys, though, like, what, what's going on here with these two? Vanessa. He seems like he likes the clout slash status, but not the level of attention or that it's for her. That, like, how much attention. Okay. So it's like he likes the idea of dating someone like JLo. He likes her status. You know, she's the hottest woman in the world, I think. I'm obsessed with her. But then it's like, oh, the reality of, yeah, how intense the attention is, is a little bit much. I don't think it's too much for her. I think she's such a narcissist. She like thrives on it. She needs it. And let's touch upon the psychology of this couple to begin with. Now you guys know, you guys know. Oh, not to be whatever, but I completely called that these two were gonna get back together. The day it broke that she broke up with A-Rod, remember I was in Palm Springs and I did that video, I was like, mark my word, she's gonna get back together with Ben Affleck. Why? Because she was down bad. J, what's his name, J-Rod, A-Rod, the guy who looks like the boiled hot dog, he does, cheated on her. And for someone of her narcissism level, it, it was, ruinous to her self-esteem. It was ruinous, which you would think like, this man is a boiled hot dog. She's Jennifer Lopez. She could have anyone. And I said, she will go back to the man who is the touchstone, the physical embodiment of the best time of her life. When she was young and she was so hot. She was like AAA list. She was being cast in everything. Did I mention she was young? right? No kids. She was footloose and fancy free. Every man wanted her. She was on the cover of magazines. Like she was unbroken. Fame breaks you down. It's difficult. But she wanted to go back to those golden magical years of new fame. When you're the it girl on the block, you've got all this power. You don't know what you don't know yet. You're not jaded, but you still are savvy. It was a beautiful good old days thing. And I said, she's going to go back to that because she needs to go back there. Her current reality is too much. She knows too much, she's seen too much. Can't we all identify with that? I mean, I can. When I am just, as the Germans say, Liebenschmude, life tired. I know I'm saying it wrong, I know, I'm sorry. Life tired, not suicidal, but just. I think about things way from my past. I have this one hurt locker, this professional athlete that I, you know, I think about because that was that time in my life. It was a beautiful, chaotic, crazy, fun, unbroken time where even politically, everything seemed easier. The internet wasn't what it was, you know? It just, life was simpler. And we go back to those halcyon days. And so if I could go back to him, I would. And the fact that she went back to Ben never surprised me. I was like, good for you, <laughs> dude. Why not? Why not create this little bubble of a time machine when everything was different? But the thing about bubbles is they're pretty fragile, you know, and they're not really built to last. So you kind of have to look at their relationship through the lens of 
what about after the fairy tale? What is it after happily ever after? What do you do if a relationship is kind of built on a fantasy? And not just fantasy, nostalgia. The worst fantasy of all. I've done videos on nostalgia and how toxic nostalgia is because nostalgia is a fucking liar. It's a revisionist. It's a Monday morning quarterback. It's a gaslighter. It's a liar. Because when I think about my Hurt Locker from back in that time, how did I describe it? Oh, it's chaotically beautiful. Can we go back to the word chaotic? That's a little bit more accurate. My life was, I was a chaos machine and I absolutely ruined this relationship with him. And it is one of the biggest regrets of my entire life. And yet, when I need some fantasy escape, I go back to that, which is not a good thing. It was actually a horribly painful chapter in my life. It took me five years to get over him. And I mean that, like, I still can't really watch hockey because if he pops up, and he will, because he's one of the best players in the world, I'm like, I just, I can't, I can't do this, I can't do this. And yet, if we had another chance, of course I would take it, of course I would take it. And so nostalgia pulls you to places that are not necessarily positive. They're always kind of bittersweet. How do we escape that? Well, I think the antidote to nostalgia is action in the present. You know, when I look back at that time with my heart locker, I'm like, okay, first of all, why did I imprint on him so hard? He was everything I wasn't. He was focused, steady, a good, good person. He was just a good person. He knew exactly what path he wanted to be on since he was 12. And he's like, like, this is what I'm going to do. He was a leader and he was so humble and so kind, just so solid as a person. I was like a fax machine short circuiting. I don't know if you've ever heard of fax machine short circuit. It's, it's like an animal that's dying, it's awful. That's how I felt. I was, Wah! and he was just rock solid, this pillar. And so when I miss him, or when I used to, because I don't think about him that much, like really at all. But when I did miss him, and even now, it's when my life feels chaotic, when I feel like a chaos machine, when I feel like, I'm not being humble. I'm not being a hard worker. I'm not using my time effectively. I'm not being a good friend. I'm not eating well. And I go back to him. I go back to that place because what is a hurt locker? It's not always someone we want to date. Although if you saw him naked, you would. It is someone you want to be. It's someone you want to be. And so the antidote to that, because that's all wrapped up in nostalgia, you know, nostalgia is like, Shouting, nostalgia's the hype man for the Hurt Locker. Nostalgia's like, oh, oh, coming to the stage, that fuck boy you dated four years ago. Let's give it up for the guy you slept with once in Cabo. Right? Yeah. <laughs> when I can say, all right, all right, how can I be less chaotic in this moment? How can I become him? How can I become him? That sounds so fucking weird and toxic, but we are in a weird and toxic place. So how can I get out of this place by embodying who this Hurt Locker is? What can I do to become like him? And so I wonder, I wonder if that was something that's at play in JLo and Ben's relationship. But let's keep reading. Ooh, this one's a good one. What to do when you get what you thought you wanted. What to do when you get what you thought you wanted. You know what one of my favorite books is? I try to read it every summer, The Great Gatsby. And forever, that Hurt Locker that I was telling you about, the athlete, he, he wasn't Gatsby, he was Daisy, I was Gatsby. Everything I did after we broke up was to get his attention. And when I say everything I did, I mean a reality show on MTV. I negotiated my contract so that it would air in his market during his off season so that he would see it. I moved heaven and earth to try to get his attention again. He was my daisy. He was my green light that I believed in on the other side of the bay. But there's a line in that book, no amount of fire or freshness can challenge what a man has stored up in his ghostly heart. It means nothing can compete with the fantasy. Nothing can compete with the fantasy of the person that you're missing and loving and that hurt locker. 
and you just won't believe that. Nobody believes that. We've all read The Great Gatsby. We've seen the movie. We know the allegory. I've told you about it. And you're sitting here being like, "Mm mm-hmm. That might be true for you. But no, I really want him back. I really want this guy, not back. I want this guy. Just, just let me find out for myself if I don't like him, okay? Could I just find out for myself? Absolutely, girl. I'm not gonna talk you out of this. And I'm not gonna say that the feelings you feel for someone or the nostalgia or the pain or the love isn't real. Of course it's real. It's real to you, it's, it's real. Fuck anyone who says it's not, it's real. I just also know the reality is also real, hence the root word. And we don't even realize how our mind is taking the reality of someone, the data points we actually have, and ticking with every little fantasy one degree away from that until we are upside down. I have a crush on a guy at my gym. He's so dreamy. He might have a girlfriend. They haven't posted in a long, long time. She's like, she looks like, um, how do I say this nicely? A man. <sighs> That's the thing with guys out here, fit guys. They wanna date fit girls. Great, of course. No, 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 no. They want to date manly, fit girls. Not like, I, I, I'm getting fit. I'm not like the fit chick yet. But I, I'm not like a slouch. I work out a lot. No, they want like, oh, she can deadlift this and she can squat that. And like, how big is her dick? Do you want her to have a penis as well? Like, she should, you guys shouldn't be flexing in a photo together. I'm sorry, is this not weird? Is this not so weird? It just goes to show the guys out here, I swear to God, I'll get back on the topic in a minute. Guys out here, they want, they're so lazy. They want to do so little labor in a relationship that they need a woman who is their carbon copy. Like, he can't learn anything new about any of her hobbies. They have to be his hobbies. Because if he's like, oh, you ice skate, what's that like? Nope, nope. Like, it's the the smallest amount of effort possible. That being said, big crush on him, big crush on him. And I found myself like thinking about him, like, oh my gosh, I can't wait till I see him. And then I found myself being like, oh, I like that boy. And like, hold, hold up. You don't know this kid. You don't know anything about this kid. I mean, you stalked him on Instagram. Okay, like you see him work out, kind of. Like everything that I know and like about him is complete projection, complete fantasy. He's a blank canvas upon which I can project my fantasies. Where on earth was I going with this? Oh, when you get what you think you want. <laughs> I'm not saying you shouldn't have a crush on the people you have a crush on or miss your exes, but I do think that we can we can definitely benefit from just that like that little pullback and being like, I'm gonna make a list of what I 100% first person data point, first person data point know to be true about somebody. What has he told me about himself? He reads 30 books a year. Wow, okay, I know that. This is not what I know, I'm just making it up. But, or am I assuming, oh, he's he probably listens to a lot of really cool podcasts. What are you basing that on? Hope? That's okay. But how about we just switch the wording? That's all we need to do is switch the wording. I hope he's intellectual, not I'm sure he is. Why are you, well, this is what you're doing. You're twisting facts to suit a theory when you need to twist a theory to suit the facts that you have. All right, because otherwise we convince ourselves that not only do we have these incredible feelings for someone and it's like it, they're, they're just this scarecrow of a person like, and we have projected all of these real qualities onto them that they may or may not have. And that's dangerous because when they actually are trying to show us who they are, we're like, mm -mm, nope, he's a great guy. What the fuck are you basing that on? No, he's not a great guy. Listen to how he's behaving. Look at what he's saying. How much of our affection for someone exists in fantasy and myth. And then you know what that does. It is almost impossible to get over somebody. Because how do you get over a fantasy? Your mind is used to shape-shifting to create this, this beautiful hologram of someone you like, maybe even telling yourself you love. So how do you get over that? Because again, your mind's just gonna shape-shift. Well, okay, he's bad, I don't like him. Oh, he's just shifted into someone I do like again. So instead of telling yourself, I really like this guy, or I love him, I'm in love with him, I want you to take a different word. I want you to have the word curious. I'm curious about him. Hmm, 
Mm-mm. Because listen, I get curious about a lot of things and I do a little investigation and I say, I'm actually not curious about that anymore. It sounds boring. Like fly fishing. I've gone fly fishing once, it was chill of course. But I'm like, oh, there's this whole like ladies group of fly fishermen and they go out in the river. I'm gonna, I'm curious about that. And I had a very healthy relationship to that. I'm curious about it. I wasn't like, I love fly fishing and I'm gonna go buy all the gear before I take one class and I'm gonna clear my calendar and I'm gonna rack up the sun damage. And then I would do it once and be like, but I love it. I love it. It's so boring. I love it. We just sit here in the sun and we ruin our skin. I love it. I love it so much and we're not even allowed to keep the fish. It would be a lot harder to admit to myself, I hate this, once I had invested the time and the money and all the equipment, right? But because I was like, I'm curious about fly fishing. I literally drove by the fly fishing shop and there were a bunch of women out in this little field like practicing. I was like, no thank you. That looks real stupid. I don't want to do that. Done. But that's okay because I didn't have this huge attachment to it. I didn't give the weight of the word. I love this. I like this. I'm doing this no matter what. And sometimes it really is as simple as just that little word switch. I'm curious. I'm curious what it'd be like to be back with my ex. I'm curious about this guy at the gym. I'm curious. Because that puts the burden on that person to satisfy your curiosity. Prove to me why I should continue to be into this. Give me some facts, give me some data. I'm gonna draw my own conclusion. Suddenly you're not the pursuer. You are someone who is allowing yourself in your feminine energy to be pursued with just the switch of a word. So don't discount that. Okay. So this topic comes up a lot. Weathering the highs and lows of a relationship. Oh. Welcome to my therapy session. Cause this is literally what I talk about in therapy so much. Girls who are single, girls who are dating, you are going to feel me on this. Um, I feel like the word that keeps coming back to me is disposable disposable i've dated let's see daniel luke let's say four or five guys in the last year roughly and i dated you know like a few weeks few months whatever in the last year every single one of those relationships ended when i had one problem just one when i dared to bring up one thing that was bothering me. That was it, off with their head, done, done. Maybe they didn't end on a bad note and maybe that, mm, no. (laughs) I actually don't really give a shit what you have to say. It's my way or it's the highway. And I chose the highway. I wasn't, I'm not gonna sit around in a relationship and be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, (laughs) you're right. I don't know why I asked you to text me once a week. I'm so sorry, (laughs) I'm so sorry. Uh, Those days are gone. Those days are gone, baby, gone. And maybe he didn't say it exactly like that. And maybe it took a while to fall apart before I got the memo that, oh, no, 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 this is the my way or the highway kind of situation. And I know exactly where the on-ramp is, so I will be seeing you later. But that is, in fact, (laughs) what happened. And I don't know if this is how men always have been or if this is like some sort of current epidemic, some fuckboy plague. I don't know if this is something we as women have created by being chronically so silent and so small where we're like, I have a need. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. I have a need. But I can tell you one thing. If I feel like that, and I'm a pretty strong person, I can't even imagine what other girls feel. I can't even imagine girls who are a little new to dating or maybe they don't have a ton of self-confidence just yet or they've really had some bad experiences. But yeah, I I was talking to my best friend about this the other day. It's like, how do people just get through things? They, They like each other, right? And the relationship progresses and then inevitably something bubbles up where it's like, hmm, hey, I need you to like listen when I talk about my day or please don't repost that insane, pathetic girl trying to make it look like she's sleeping with you. Yeah. Please don't do that because it hurts my feelings and it's disrespectful. And instead of a guy being like, 
okay, let's let's figure this out. I might not 100% agree with you, or you might, you might be asking for something I can't 100% give, but I care about you and I wanna try to fix this. Have not heard that once, haven't heard that once. I've heard, hmm, yeah, no, no. Or however that manifests, and usually it's definitely not that nice, definitely not that nice. And we, my friend and I were talking, it's like, how do, who do we have to be for a man to say, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, I don't wanna hurt your feelings, let's fix this. It, I should not have chosen this as the topic because I don't fucking know. And it's very, very frustrating. And I'm not kidding, I talk about this almost every single week in therapy, like, because this is what I do, and you guys might do this too. I am very chill until I'm not. And I'm cool, 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 and then boom. I don't know how to not just be such a bitch when my feelings are hurt. And yeah, guys are probably like, whoa, like this is out of nowhere. Like she was chill and fun and sexy and the cool girl and whatever, and she's freaking out. The thing is though, I'm not, I don't, swear at guys, I don't scream, I don't yell, I don't call 15 times, I don't text paragraphs. I'm to the point and I don't pepper what I say when I'm saying something real with 10,000 winking emojis to like water down what I'm saying. <laughs> no, I don't do that. I don't do that. I'm Kris Jenner sitting there with the martini and that printed Dolce & Gabbana suit not smiling. That's what I am. I'm still glamorous and still a bad bitch, but I'm not smiling. Why do I need to? Why do I always need to sugarcoat and sugarcoat and dip in chocolate and bronze and gold? Everything, every emotion that I have so that I don't get dumped. Aren't we all a little tired of that? What kind of self gaslighting is that? What kind of like self terrorization system have these men set up? Like I don't even need to terrorize her. She's gonna do it herself, watch. I'm gonna do this thing that bothers her and when she brings it up, I'm gonna make her feel like it's her fault and she's gonna end up apologizing to me. So what my therapist says, I'm gonna tell you his advice and then I'm gonna tell you my advice, which he's like, mm. <laughs> but you guys can choose. You guys can choose what you want. His advice is stop staying small. His advice is you're dating the wrong people. You're dating the wrong people because the right guy someone who cares about you or is capable of fixing something will do exactly that. It might not be a perfect fix, but he's at the very least going to listen to you and say, I don't want you to feel that way. Okay, how about, babe, it's not realistic that I text you all day every day, which is not what I want, but just an example. So, hey, let's do a FaceTime every other day and a good morning text for sure. He will try to negotiate. Because when you think about, let's say a business or any situation where people are negotiating, the person who's like, then don't do it, I don't fucking care, walk away. Is that the kind of scenario you wanna be in? Someone who's just like calling your bluff? Oh, you don't like it, what are you gonna do, leave? Is that a relationship? That's a hostile corporate takeover, not even. I don't want to be in a mergers and acquisitions type relationship. This isn't like an 80s movie starring Michael Douglas. I don't like that dynamic. I wanna be able to have a conversation, but my issue is I'm too chill until I'm not and then it comes out real bitchy. Or, or if it's not bitchy, I feel like it sounds desperate and needy and like, where's all this emotion out of nowhere? So I need to demonstrate more emotionality <laughs> and more unchillness throughout the relationship. Not just be high maintenance and bitchy and problematic and, ugh, and naggy all the time, but if you don't want something, speak up. I actually don't feel like Chinese tonight. Can we do Indian? And it I, sometimes that sounds so easy to say, and it's like, obviously you can say that. I Yes, but when you don't wanna rock the boat in a new relationship, that's bad. Like I almost went out with this guy the other day it was like a bumble date and we were trying to think of what to do. And he, he's like, do you want to get a drink? I was like, I'm actually not a big drinker. Um, and he's like, you know what? I love that you said that because 
I'm not either. I'm really trying to cut back. I was like, okay, great. I was like, maybe dessert. Here's, that's my mistake. That's my mistake. I don't eat sugar and I don't eat dairy. Why did I say dessert? Why did I say dessert? Why did I say anything? I should have left the ball in his court for him to shuck and jive and come up with something. I was just trying to be, I was trying to keep sweet. And that, let's not rock the boat thing, it really does start that early. It can start with message number three on Bumble. It can. And then you get into the habit of it and you normalize it and you get a positive response from it. And it's like, well, okay, I'm gonna keep doing this. So it got worse. He's like, oh, that's a great idea. Let's go get ice cream. And you know what I said? Great. You know what food I hate? Ice cream. I know, I'm very much alone on this. I don't like pizza either. But I was like, yes, ice cream. <sighs> Why? And I was stressed about this ice cream situation because when I eat dairy and sugar, I get really, it's almost like I have a hangover. It's basically like a hangover the next day. I'm exhausted, I have to take a three hour nap, I'm bloated, my skin is bad. It's just, it's not, I would, it would honestly be better if I went out and took shots. It really would. Or at the very least the same. And I was like, oh, why, did I do that? why did I say that? And it's too late to be like, actually, I don't eat dairy. He'd be like, then why did you say yes? Like it, it was too late, it was too late. And then I'm like, Fuck, if we get into a relationship, I'm gonna have to pretend that I eat dairy this whole, what have I done? And I was getting madder and madder and madder and more annoyed at myself, but also in my mind at him. And I was like, by the time the date rolled around, I was mad as a little wet hen. I was just ready to snap and snarl. And then he canceled. I went ballistic. Not to him. I, didn't, I was like, sure, no problem. Because on one hand, I was relieved. Okay, I don't have to feed myself dairy and pretend that I like it. But I went ballistic to myself because I, this was such an example of my bullshit. Such an example of my bullshit and where it starts and how fast it starts and the snowball that it creates. And I'm like, this is, a, this is the hand of God saving you from your own ridiculousness, Shallon. And it was just such a microcosm of how I conduct my relationships. Like, that's okay. And again, I'm a very strong opinionated person. There's plenty that I don't put up with. But why do I need to put up with anything? Why do I need to go beyond my boundaries and my borders for any reason? It's like, well, I went beyond my boundary for that, but I, but I wouldn't sleep with them on the first date. Why the fuck does it have to be an either or? Why can't you not eat dairy and not sleep with them on the first date? Have you ever thought of that? I, uh, so I know it feels like we're getting a little bit in the weeds here. You know, like how does ice cream help you get through the, the slings and arrows of a long-term relationship? Because you have to start practicing standing up for yourself. That is, that is number one, because why? Because you don't wanna do what I do, which is say nothing and then explode explode or however they view it as explosion. Sometimes, all right, it's a little on the explosive side. Sometimes it's not and they're gaslighting me and they're being a dick, right? But I don't like that feeling of mm, mm. I need to cultivate the practice of micro confrontations, whether it's I actually don't like ice cream. I know I'm so weird. Do you want to go get like an iced tea and walk around the dog park? There was a million things to do in this town that don't involve ice cream, and I didn't come up with one of them. When we can practice that micro-confrontation, we become desensitized to confrontation, desensitized to the, to the drama of saying how we really feel. We become practiced at standing up for ourselves, and therefore, we take this like panic response out of it, and we are able to communicate more neutrally and effectively. You think it's the opposite, and guys, Guys want to gaslight you and say it's the opposite. Oh, like she's a girl who just never shuts the fuck up. She's always bitching about something. Actually, actually, Dan, what it does is when a woman can speak her mind and when she feels empowered to speak her mind, she's more likely to do it in an effective manner. She will therefore gain the tools to express herself, not in this like explosive panic state, but in a more metered, neutral, rational way because she does it more. 
So don't let a man tell you that it's better to keep quiet. I mean, for him, yeah, great. Because then you explode, you do look crazy, and he, that's exactly what he's gonna tell you and you end up apologizing to him. But the way to get through a rough patch, I think you have to identify, is this a topic or is this an issue? What does that mean? What's, what is the topic versus the issue? Okay, here's an example. Last year I dated someone that I was very much in love with, like the ferret, the ferret. And what spelled the end for us was he said he was being very cryptic and dramatic. He got some news about a past relationship and it was like this Nancy Drew mystery. I, I still don't know what the fuck he was talking about. I don't know if he found out someone he had dated cheated on him, if someone had had his baby. I had no idea. But he's like, I need to cut our date short and we're gonna miss this band that we wanted to see because I'm just not feeling up to it. And I was like, that's really annoying. I got the tickets. I've been looking forward to this. I have an outfit. If you only want to hang out from six to seven, I would rather not, and I would rather take my friend. Well, no, I want to see you. And we were bitching about this date. We were bitching about the band and missing the band. And I bought the tickets and and I had to wait in line to get them. It wasn't about the band. I couldn't give a shit about the band. There were no name Bozeman band, who cares? That was the topic, the issue was the issue that kept coming up again and again and again in our relationship. He wasn't over his divorce or some ex relationship. Whoever it was, this specter, he wasn't over it. And I finally had the wherewithal to be like, the real issue here, Ferret, is that you have not reconciled your past. You are riddled with like emotional bullet holes and baggage, and there is nothing I can do to stop it or fix it. And I am just here in the splash zone of this, absorbing all of the pain. And it's really not fair to me. And he was like, you're right, I'm sorry, I'm not over this, I'm not over that. My, if I had to hear the words healing journey, bleh, one more time, I was gonna fill my vagina with cement. Like I, it was the, <sighs> but the band had nothing to do with it. That was just the thing we were hanging that argument on. So when you're going through a rough patch, ask yourself, is this really about the dishwasher and how he loaded it? Or is it about the fact that he's not very conscientious and therefore that makes you feel like he doesn't appreciate how conscientious you are when you clean the house. He doesn't really actually understand how long it takes you to Swiffer this whole apartment. He doesn't understand that when he puts the cup in right side up, it fills with fucking water in the dishwasher. And therefore, what that means is that he takes your effort in this relationship for granted. Just like he took for granted the fact that you went out and ran all over town to get peonies for his mom's birthday. He didn't notice that. The topic is the dishwasher. The topic are the flowers. The issue is being taken for granted. The issue is an unequal emotional investment into a relationship. But it's much easier to fight about the dishwasher because maybe there's an easy fix there. It's easier to fight about the flowers. Maybe there's a fix there. But if you actually get down to nitty gritty, that takes more effort. That takes two people looking at the truth. And it takes you being willing to look at maybe what the truth is, that he won't look at it. That is a truth in and of itself. No answer is an answer. No action is action. And maybe we don't want to do that. <laughs> nope, I would rather just bitch about the dishwasher forever. It's not about the dishwasher, girl. You can get 10 dishwashers, okay? It's not gonna matter. It's about what's going on underneath that. Are you strong enough to look at that? And is he? Because listen, you could, you, just looking at that is only half the battle. With the ferret, I was like, hold on, hold on. It's not the band. I don't give a shit about the band. It's, it's you not being over your divorce and dragging me through this process with you. When I met you on a dating app, which signaled to me, I don't know, call me crazy. You were ready to date and you're not. And I don't understand why, I don't understand why you can't force yourself to be ready. I mean, if I'm being honest, that was my, that was my feeling. Why can't you just get over it? Do you have any idea how lucky you are to find me? Do you know how lucky we are that we found each other? We are 3D printed for each other. 
What are you fucking doing? But I, it took me a very long time to be strong enough to read that writing on the wall. You can't force yourself to be over it. He can't force himself. Or maybe he can, and he just doesn't want to. Or maybe he is over it, and you're just not the girl for him. That's fun. That's fun. That was not an easy thing to face. And you know what? I, I was going to say, oh, but it was easier than staying in a relationship that was painful. I don't know that it was. I don't know that it was. At the time when we broke up, and I mean still, I still have so many feelings about this. I remember just thinking a little, this is so embarrassing, a little of him is better than nothing. A little of this, just to have him a little bit, well, it's better than not having him at all, right? Right? We think that, you know? But that's not the case. Because we're not, we're not breadcrumb people. You know, who, you know what eats breadcrumbs? Pigeons. Pigeons eat things off the ground. Pigeons eat scraps. They're scavengers. They're not hunters. They don't want that big, juicy, delicious salmon. They can't catch it. You know what can? An eagle. A predator. An apex predator. Something at the top of the food chain. And it's a lot harder to hunt that salmon, to catch that trout, get those little mice. Pigeons just, they're just walking around pecking. Well, I don't know, is that a cigarette butt? Is that a used condom? Whatever. They don't care. They'll just take what they can get. It's a beggar's mentality. And when you're hungry for something or someone or an experience, I mean, seems better than nothing. But that's not our species. What would you think of an eagle if you saw it pecking around on the ground for worms and scraps? You're like, what's wrong with that thing? What's wrong with that thing? It would, it simply wouldn't happen. It simply wouldn't happen. And yet we, the most advanced species in the world, we do this all the time. We do this all the time. Why? Why? And maybe that's what we pull back and we ask ourselves. Why are we tolerating situations like this? But let's say you're dealing with someone who does want to work it out. Truly, that's so much of the battle. You know, relationships, people, like they're hard. Of course they're hard. They're impossible, though, when one person isn't willing to work. When one person doesn't care and the other person is doing all the work. And they're agonizing when that person who is doing all the work won't acknowledge that this other person isn't doing any. And we have friends like this. I have a friend like this now. And she's like talking to her boyfriend about the relationship. I'm like, baby, baby, baby. He don't care, girl. He don't care. Don't post the lyric. Don't post the subtweet. He don't care. Go to bed. Don't sit down and talk with him. He's made it very clear. He does not give a shit about this relationship. Okay? And relationships are, they're not even 50-50. They're 100-100. And you're trying to put in 200 to make up for his zero. And that's not how this works. So if he is willing to fix things, you guys have a pretty good chance of fixing it. I mean, there, oh my gosh, we could do a whole video series on how to fight fair, but basically the TLDR, communicate neutrally. Instead of you are da, 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 you do this. Those are accusatory. Those are like an arrow that you're, that you're firing at someone. You have to phrase it, when you do this, I feel. It makes me feel bad about myself when you don't load the dishwasher right. Because it tells me, you don't really notice how much work I do around here. And that makes me wonder how invested you are in this relationship. When we can communicate our feelings, we can be collaborative and we can try to find a way around them. But you have to actually make sure you wanna collaborate and not just go for the throat and win. Are you looking for peace or are you looking for victory? We can continue this conversation. I'm honestly running out of steam. I'm exhausted. I'm sorry. I feel like we've covered a lot of ground here. But yeah, we can keep this up. Tell me your topics on fighting fair and getting through rough patches. Tell me your ideas. We can get through this. And what do you think about J-Lo and Ben? Benifer in general. Do you think they're going to make it? What does making it even mean? Have you gotten back together with a nostalgia hurt locker? Was it everything you thought it was going to be? Or was it like the Great Gatsby? No amount of fire or freshness. I'll see you later, Shalligators.